All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash. It's Hero of Aetheric, and this is one video for all you architects out there. We're going to be covering buildings in the game, why you would want to go in buildings, why you want to build buildings, where to find certain buildings out in the world, that type of thing. So starting off with the number one, that there are shops. Uh, you start off being able to access a general store in uh, the early towns, and eventually uh, following the story quest, you will be able to build your first shop where you can stock up on small mana potions and health potions, large health potions, buy a torch, which increases more things to you. And then you can also find kind of common items. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you kind of get the gist of it, what you, what you can end up uh, finding in shops. Thing to remember is you can upgrade shops up to level 10 by going in options and upgrading and costs uh, an extra 100,000 gold every time you level it up. One thing to note there is that every time you level it up, it actually restocks the shop. So while you're leveling up, make sure you check uh, each time. But basically, shops uh, early on are good for finding uh, whetstones, materials such as stone, wood, and you can buy cheap items like, you know, tier one, two, three, uh, weapons and armor and dismantle them down so for example wooden wooden type weapons we'll see if we can check another shop here find a, a wooden type weapon like a halberd buy that dismantle it for for items uh, iron iron hammer dismantles into iron for example uh, leather we can have we have here uh, all these material type things so once you start building a few in your origin town you definitely want to check them you can also restock them uh, paying a small price more items okay crossbow this is a perfect one so for example spent 10k on on some crossbows and if you dismantle that in your inventory you'd get 10 wood out of that uh, so really nice there basically keep out keep your eye out for for stone and wood early on uh, later on uh, you can buy some herbs uh, some empty bottles but generally good for keeping your stock of potions next we have uh, bestries, which again, uh, the first bestry you can come across are in uh, Vinland and uh, Svarga. I guess Svarga is the first place. Uh, you, you can then end up building your own bestry and build more bestries. This is where you get pets. And you can only buy pets up to your tier. If you release a pet, you get half of the cost back. Now, pets up until tier 7 cost gold. After that, they cost orns. T tells you how much orns they cost. And basically, if you have a pet equipped and you buy a new pet, your previous pet will go to your home. So you've got a storage of followers here. Upgrading this building allows you to store more followers, currently up to 100. You can also store items in here, maybe ornates that you want to use later. That will save a little bit of the lag in your game. Now we're gonna talk about uh, town halls and inns. So the first town hall you come across is actually in Loton, and not long after that you can build your own town hall in your origin town. And every two days will give you a bunch of quests to complete. So some of them are easy, like hand in materials. Other other quests ask you to go and kill a bunch of mobs or upgrade gear. So standard standard type quests. The thing about the town hall is that you also have morale. Uh, when your morale is higher, uh, you have basically higher daily income. You get that from your residences as well. It means you get uh, more population. Population is just kind of a thematic thing. Uh, increases your daily income. That gets tied into your basically your login bonus. And while we're in the origin town, I will go outside to visit more inns, but keeping your morale high means you've got a more frequent chance to claim items from your citadel. And a citadel, you can rarely actually find nice items such as uh, summoning scrolls and uh, diluted mnemonics, as well as other materials and random items that can be of quality. So, as we said, uh, there is currently a town hall in Loton, uh, one in Northern as well, here. And it's the same idea, except the town halls in these areas are basically they give you quests limited to the to the tier of the of the zone 
So we just go in low turn. We should get. Uh, you see, it's asking us to kill the tier one monsters here, and give tier one materials. Whereas your town hall in your origin town will give quests uh, up to two tiers below your current tier. Okay, next we're going to talk about inns, and I'm going to walk up to Vinland to find. The Rose's Rest, which is uh, the first inn we have in the game. So let's enter Vinland and visit the Rose's Rest. This is the first inn we have available in Aetheric. And inns give you quests, but unlike the Town Hall, the quests here uh, typically have respawn rates of like 10 days, which I think is a little bit long, but at least it gives you time to, to complete all of these. So you may as well you know, accept, accept the quest here. Uh, you then have the inn section of inns. I mean, this is you can pay a little bit of gold and recover your health and mana. We then have the tavern section, which uh, pay 1,000 gold uh, for information. And what this does is tells you where some NPCs are located. And you can then mark them on the map. So we've got Bard Alden has been seen in Fen Lagoon. Sir Balan has been seen in Northern Settlement. So that's what inns do. Now we're also going into Avalon to talk about a couple of other things. Avalon also has an inn, by the way, in the north of the, the town. Now blacksmiths, these are dotted about in certain towns. You can also build one fairly early on in your origin town. This is where you level up gear and uh, you can also smelt gear to de-level it or you can also smelt gear to take out adornments. Basically, when you smelt an adornment, you have the option to remove it for gold or destroy it for free. When you remove it, you basically get the opportunity to reuse uh, the adornment. So there's Lady of the Lake, uh, another inn. Now these two buildings here in Avalon, we have the Merlin's Apprentices. This is called, uh, uh, it's basically an arcanist shop if we use Orna terminology. Essentially it sells skills. Now there's no refresh right here, but typically these will refresh every three days. And some really nice skills in here, especially ward skills, such as like Ward of Mithril, Word of Ortonite later on, and the transference skills for uh, for mages that deal damage and recover ward. Keep your eye out as well for event summon type skills. We then have the Herbalist. Again, you can build one in your origin town, and this is where you uh, create potions, different types of potions. Uh, I'd say the biggest ones early on are Beast's Blood. This attracts more monsters to you, so that's really good for kill quests such as Baylor Guardians. And what else? Uh, that's the, probably the biggest one earlier on. There's also a really nice uh, achievement reward for potions, which is kind of easy to do. So currently there are Arcanists in Avalon and up in Jotunheim. There's another Arcanist up there, so you can kind of get uh, a second chance to, to grab some skills. We're now heading towards Sadun uh, to check out Bazaars. Okay, we are in the Sadun desert village where we have a bazaar. Now bazaars are like uh, like shops which can sell so many random things. You got stone here, so they can sell materials, they can sell items all the way up from tier 1 to tier 10. Uh, the difference really about uh, bazaars is they can, the amount of items that they can sell is way way higher than shops. So like Literally any item that can drop from monsters almost is available in bazaars. They can also be higher quality and leveled up. Uh, unfortunately, I don't... Okay, here's, a, for example, a legendary embered adamantine amulet. This is an amazing item to get. Uh, it literally has a fire element, which gives you resistive fire damage, and it's legendary. And it could also be uh, leveled as well. Got random gear, some hide... There's a lot, a lot of items in here. Heretic's robe. Yeah, some, some of the items can be quite expensive, but basically you have a bazaar uh, here in Sudun, and you also have a bazaar up in uh, Murkheim, the mines. Where are we? Yeah, Murkheim mines. There is also a bazaar there. Okay, next thing is the Elven Alchemist. This is situated in Lithran Woods, tier three area. But this alchemist can do a couple of nice things. Firstly, it can uh, enchant items. So that basically means 
well, it can chant weapons, to be clear. It basically means you can put uh, one of the basic elements on your weapon. Um, so that cause, you know, the reason you'd want to do this, if you have a melee weapon and you are in a faction and you want to use that for raiding, you get 25% damage bonus doing attacks of that uh, faction, of your own faction. Uh, just be careful, like some, some weapons, they have innate elements and you can't remove them. For example, the Deathbringer will always be dark. You cannot remove it. Uh, you have the option to put in adornments, much like the jeweler. But the biggest, most important thing is the Master Forge. So Master Forging takes items from level 10 to level 11, and it is instant. And depending on the original quality of the item, uh, it will require you to have more materials to hand. So for example, this Mighty Mimic Head, it's a standard quality. You can see uh, the material requirements are basically 300 uh, for each of the materials. Whereas this ornate staff of Tiamat requires 570 uh, red draconite. So the higher the quality of the item, the higher uh, material requirement is to master forge. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have... Okay, here I can master forge this dark garb. Uh, see, see, it's a standard quality, so it's 300 for each material. And master forging is instant, unlike leveling in the blacksmith. So um takes you like a week to level an item up to level 10 and then boom master forge it uh, immediately i just found uh, another arcanist in baylor by the way baylor spells but the thing we are more interested in in baylor area which is a tier 9 zone is odin's forge so this is a demon forge uh, if we compare it to what's available in orna and much like an alchemist you can enchant weapons but here you have the four non-basic elements, Dark, Holy, Dragon, and Arcane, different material costs. Um, so you can apply different elements on your weapons. Quite interesting in, in late game. And we can also Demon Forge gear here. So after Master Forge, the next level is uh, Demon Forge, which is basically level 12. And this time uh, the material cost is 666 times the, the base quality. So the material cost getting higher, much like Master Forging, it is instant to Demon Forge uh, your gear here. Um, but yeah, very nice place uh, to uh, level up your gear pretty much to the max. After this is uh, God Forging, which is very hit or miss. Then in New Lioness, we have another type of building, which is the Colosseum. This is the tier eight zone. Now Colosseum is basically uh, 20 PvP fights in a row, but every new fight gets harder than the last time. As in, the opponents are random, like any other arenas, but they actually have uh, a stat bonus every higher floor you go. So 20 floors, if you can complete it, you get, uh, much like completing a dungeon, you get uh, random materials and you get some PvP gear, which is all at least superior quality. So there's a very good chance of getting... Uh, legendary or ornate gear good fun uh, to come to complete them uh, what else have we got here so we've got jeweler shop here at lioness uh, again yeah tier 8 zone lioness okay so in terms of buildings out in the world we've pretty much covered everything uh, except the oracle temple and uh, but the oracle temple i will cover in a amity specific video uh, much the same as uh, dungeons. I'll cover dungeons in their own video as well. For the origin town, uh, refinery, you basically put random materials in and you get random materials out. The You, you see each material has a... Some materials have higher quality. So like the green is superior, blue is famed, and ortonite is uh, legendary quality. The higher the quality, the more materials you get back compared to what you put in. So if I put 120 ortonite in, I would actually get, I think, double, uh, more than double the, the amount of materials I get back as I would Auric Alchem. So this generally a late game thing. You also have the trading post. I'll probably do a guide just about trading, but essentially trading, uh, you put something in and you get something out depending on, uh, on the tier or the quality. And I'm not sure if leveling changes anything, but you, you can see basically I put in uh, an ornate tier 8 item and I got back an ornate tier 8 item. It's basically random. 
Um, I don't really don't know if that actually requires a guide in itself. It's fairly it's fairly simple. And you can, in fact, uh, just realize you can build a Colosseum in your origin town and then Altar of Ascension. That is like end end game tier 10. Uh, it costs a lot of bloody orns. And uh, I've, I've got a guide uh, on ascending, video guide on ascending. I recommend you check that out if you want to want to see what ascension is all about but i think for now that is the main buildings covered as i said i will be uh doing like a dungeon video specifically on the dungeons around the world uh, but this covered the basics so thanks very much for watching thanks of course to the arisen orna legends for supporting myself on patreon on twitch uh, and on discord without their support i probably would have stopped doing orna videos a long time ago but here we are uh keep going uh, in doing a3 videos now so if you've got any further questions, please drop a comment. I'll do my best to answer that as soon as I can. Otherwise, I'm Shabash. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.